After years of research and writing, CBSN New York's very own Mary Calvey's new book, Dear George, Dear Mary, hits the bookstores today. It's about George Washington and his first love, a New York heiress. And if this has you thinking about writing a novel of your own, you can turn to Mary to see how it's done. We added the background, changed his hair. We added his coat. We also added the flowers in her hand. George's height was something yes. we were talking yes. about. Or... We extended his, his body completely. Creating that eye-catching coverage is one part of the process of publishing a novel. First, though, is what's inside. So that they are actually ending on an incredibly intimate moment. For several years, I've been working with editor Elizabeth Beyer. <gasps> Sharing historic documents I discovered about young George Washington and his first love, New York heiress Mary Phillips. What I found in my research was a theory of love, deception, and vengeance. Elizabeth helped me to turn these never-before-known details into a novel. One of the first changes she suggested was the title. That simple change from George, my love, to Dear George, Dear Mary puts both of the characters into the book right away. For budding authors, some tips from the experts on how to write your own novel and get it published. Start with a strong story idea, she says. Uniqueness. You know, there, there is something, uh, editors will, will often say, I wanted to work on it because I fell in love with it. Next, she suggests, develop irresistible characters. Really good writers can get into the head of somebody completely different. Write, rewrite, and rewrite again. I think we went through about four yeah. or, five. or five. And that's just what I sent to Elizabeth. I worked through at least a dozen versions of the manuscript on my own, maybe more. Let's move on to Dear George, Dear Mary by Mary Calvey. Publishers are always looking for great content, and acquisition usually starts with a query letter to a literary agent who can get your book into the hands of people who make the decisions. We publish about 2,500 new books a year across all of our imprints. With a big team effort, Dear George, Dear Mary is ready for publication. How We're many needed. changes do you think there were to this one? Um. <laughs> <laughs> And the author, Mary Calvi, is here right now, our fantastic co-worker. We are all so proud of you. Oh, Dana, no, thank kidding. you so much. I'm and not thank kidding. you for all of your help because I know I came in with some manuscripts to have you take a look at as well. Because someone asked me what was the most daunting part, and mm -hmm. really it's the words. You know, because you have a thought in your head as to what you want to put on paper, but really being able to tell that story in a compelling way is difficult. And especially when we're talking about 1700s. Yes. I know you picked out a couple of words for me. It, it was interesting because she came in my office one day, she shut the door and she goes, I'm writing a book. And I was like, oh my goodness. And then just so compelling everything about it and feeling your excitement. But then I do love words. Yes, and you're amazing. We went through grammar, but we also went through, okay, here's a word, whatever it is, and then look up the origin and go, wait a second, they weren't using that word in the 1700s. Exactly. So I think that one of the words was barkentine, which was a sailing vessel at the right. time. But barkentine was used a little bit later on. So when you're writing a novel, you have to be really careful about the terminology and the dialogue and all of that. One of the things that I thought was really fascinating in the process is when I started one of my first versions of the manuscript, I really used a lot when it came to setting. I mm. wanted people to understand because we're talking 1700s New York it was fascinating. However, it wasn't as exciting to just talk about setting. So what I would advise writers who may be starting to write their own novel Novel is to maybe take pieces of the setting and put it aside and maybe like a deleted items file but nice. keep that okay. because like in chapter 2 war 10 you may want to bring one of those pieces back so never really get rid of anything you're writing because I think it really helps the other thing that I learned throughout is that you have to find inspiration somewhere mm. for me it was wonderful to be able to walk through the homes of the heiress they still right exist here in our area. you know in Washington Heights is the Morris Jumel mansion which she built with her husband as well as Phillips Manor in Yonkers, which is her childhood home. So to be able to walk through those and use elements that are like within the walls in the story, I think is really helpful. So whatever you're writing, you may want to go to the place yourself physically, not just look at it on the computer or maybe get an idea about it. A quiet just time there and just let it let immerse it yourself sure. in that world. I'm also wondering, and, and I think this would be helpful to writers too, your uh, day job, uh, we, for the news, 
short, short, short. Often mm -hmm. we don't have the luxury of uh, in local news of, of stories that go so long. Sometimes 10, 20 seconds, a minute and a half, two minutes. How did your head? wear those two hats. Exactly. I had to like transition myself. So I found time to go from journalist and then I broke off. So on the weekends I would get up early. I would uh, have a cup of tea at, in, in a beautiful little mug that actually I obtained. It was from, built, made in the 1600s, oh, this beautiful mug and this little teacup. And yeah. I thought, you know, I have to sort of um, get into that time and into that understanding that I can't write like I normally do in a short way, but really be descriptive and really add imagery and I plan classical music uh, from the 1700s in order to sort of get myself ready to be able to start writing in that way and to create dialogue that would have been fitting for that time. Let alone romance. Um, oh. I, it was an honor for me to be part of your team. And it was an honor for me to have you with me, so and, it was a lot of fun. And I'm a, I'm a listener, so I cannot wait. Uh, the audio version is ready to go, right? It is, um, yes. And so I will be listening because I felt like I read it in chapters, yeah. and I haven't read the whole thing yet, so I look forward to and thank you again for having Having me be part of it and congratulations I'll say it again so proud thank you so much so and, and thank you it was just an honor for me to have you part of this process thanks thank you Mary